Biz onu bir oturuyor var. Hello, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this uh, wonderful Wednesday, the 13th. Tonight, we have Francisco Osores bringing us a, uh, a talk about spiritism and physical science. So this is my, uh, one of my favorite parts about spiritism is it's, um, it's all the sciences that it ties into spirituality and all of the different, uh, different fluids and everything. So, and Francisco always has an interesting perspective on, on the science, so I'm excited to hear the talk. So first, um, again, thank you for joining us. I'd like to invite everyone for a short prayer before we begin. So let us be thankful for this opportunity, another opportunity to learn and grow and to share ideas, another opportunity to better ourselves, to better understand the world around us, the people around us, to understand ourselves, to dig deeper into our personalities, how, how we fit into the greater picture. Remembering all those that came before us, laying down the groundwork, being inspired, helping others. Let us remember all the hard work that has been accomplished and fought for, blood and sweat, to, to get us to this point in, in humanity on this planet with all these new technologies and this sharing of information and ideas, things are moving very rapidly and understanding those things, especially in also understanding yourself, it's a very, it's a very transformational time. It's very exciting. So keeping that in mind and with an open heart and an open mind, we welcome Francisco to share some knowledge and to hear his talk. Thank you so much. So be it. It's okay now, right? Um, it's the, the batteries. Oh, the battery is weak, right? You stop the, the plane? We can't once we start eating. Sorry. 
Okay. Well, keep, keep going the idea that the last two topics that we're showing here, the moral laws and hope consolations, this is the basic idea of the philosophy or the ethics in the, the Spirit's books or in the Spiritism doctrine, if you want to say that. And this kind of knowledge, this kind of information, this part of the Spirit's book didn't change at all. Maybe for 100 years from now, it's going to be still update for, for day by day what you need it. But the first part of the Spirit's book, when you talk about the general elements of the universe or the primary cause, that's related to, to science. And of course, science changes every decade, every year, every time. And let's go then to the next slide. It's going to take, what is the idea here? Alain Kardec, when he was organizing the Spirit's book, he has a lot of questions, not only related to the moral aspect, but he wants to make sure that we can differentiate that the Spirit's communication was not a product of the physical body, was not a product of the physical laws or the physical matter. There was intelligence behind this. But he still keeps some, doing some questions because he had in, in mind that you don't need only to clarify scientific knowledge, but you need to make sure that the spirits give information for you. They have knowledge that you can say, okay, this spirit is talking something that makes sense. The ideas he's talking is related to the science, it makes sense. Then we can forward this information to put in a book and pass to the others. Because if the spirit was talking about something that even for that time, the scientific aspect was completely no sense from the answer for the spirits, he said, okay, that's kind of a question is not appropriate to be in the book, is not appropriate to, the answer is not appropriate to give forward for everybody. Look at the question number 22 in the Spirit's books. If you read this question on the time of 1857, at the time the book was organized in the first edition, makes sense this kind of a question. But if you go to 1927, it's already a little bit different. The questions look like make no sense, look like very incomplete. And today the question is going to be, oh, no, we need to make a complete review for this question. Why? Because he said he wants to know about the matter. He says, matter is generally defined as being that which has extension, means you can measure. Well, then if you, cannot, if you don't have extension, you cannot measure, it's not matter. Well, we know that's not possible today. We know that we matter that we cannot measure. Then we can make an impression of our sense. Oh, not every matter make impression in our sense. We have instrumentations today that you can detect like uh, microwaves. We cannot detect microwaves in your body. We cannot detect microwaves in any sense at all. Then we could say microwave could not be a matter. But we know that is different. A, this, the third one, he says, process impenetrability, or says it all means. The objects, the matter cannot penetrate each other. Today, we have a different perspective about this. You know? It's not because you can make one object make a fusion with the other one. But you know, when you study the atomic structure, you can see, okay, molecules can connect with the other molecules, can react it, the particles can connect with the other particles, but the idea of impenetrability is completely different. That's why this question here, when you look at you say, okay, today this question should be changed. Can we imagine if today if Alan Kardec is going to rewrite this spirit's book or the kind of questions? I guess there are going to be like 500 questions only relate to the idea of scientific aspect. Look at the answers for the spirits gave to him on that time. From your point of view, they are correct. You see, for the point of view you have in 1857, this kind of a concept is correct. Because you can only define it in accordance with what you know. Of course, you cannot, if you don't know, I'm not going to tell you about it yet. You don't know. But the spirits tell him, but matter exists in states which are unknown to you. It may be, for instance, so ethereal and subtle as to make no impression upon your sense, and yet it is still matter, although you will not be for you. This is very interesting because the Spirit is telling him, look, in your point of view, the way you see science right now, your definitions for matter is okay in 1857. But if you were writing this book in 1927, the question is going to be completely different, it has to be different, because the answers tell you the matter exists in states which are known to you. 
He's already telling Allan Kardec, look, in the future, 100 years from now, you're going to have so many information, so many knowledge about the matter, that these questions has to be a different one. Let's go look at the second question. He did it later on. Question 27, he asks the spirits, there are then two general elements to the universe, matter and spirits. It means the dualistic idea, right? The dualistic perception about life. You have matter and spirits. Look here, he's, he's not talking about mind and matter. He's not talking about the mind and the body. He's talking about matter and spirit. It means the mind is one of the properties of the spirit. It's not the spirit itself. The mind is not the spirit itself. It's very clear. We need to be very clear about that. Because in science, sometimes you have this kind of a dualistic vision that's the problem between mind and the body, mind and the matter. But the spirit was telling him a different perception. Is the spirit and matter. Maybe mind is part of the matter, but the spirit has the ability to, to, to have the mind. And the spirit answer to Alan Kardec, yes, means you have the matter and the spirits. And above them, both is God, the creator, parent of all things. These three elements are the principle of all the exist in the universal trinity. Then the spirits add another information. The answer for the question 27 is bigger than the one I put over here. I only collect half of the answers. And they keep going and say, but to the material element must be added the universal fluid. Why he call about the, this name fluid? Because on that time, 1857, nobody knows about electromagnetic waves. Nobody has no knowledge about the electrons. Nobody has any knowledge about the protons. Nobody knew about how to communicate between one electronic over here, the electronic in the other side of the planet without wires. They didn't know about this yet. And everybody would you'd say that the electricity and the magnet was a fluid, was a fluid inside of a circuit, was a fluid inside of a, a wire because nobody has no knowledge about the electron. Then you say, oh, is the, is the electrons flowing from one point to the other point? Is a particle going to one point to the another point? This particle has a negative charge, is going to one point to another point. If you didn't know, they used to call on that time, it was a fluid. According to the higher spirits, this universal primitive elemental fluid is the principle without which all matter would remain forever in a state of division. It would never acquire the properties given by gravity. This is aspect is very interesting. What he's calling here universal fluid, you could give a different name. You could say primitive matter, universal matter, cosmic matter. This, he says, is something that's connected to the matter that we live. Without this substance, matter will not be stable. Today, when you're going to study the physics, the new physics, what they call so many different theories, they have... Uh, quantum field theory, they have the quantum electrodynamics, chromo electrodynamics, and so on. We get so many knowledge that today we forget to do a definition of what's matter, what is the atom, it's completely, completely different, even from 1927. And the next question is asking this, is like a, a, a dando for the question. It says, is this fluid, like, is this substance? We could say, is this substance what you have designated by the name of electricity? Because they knew electricity about 1857. They didn't know about electromagnetic waves. The theory of the Maxwell wrote was after that. The answer of the spirit it is, we have said that it's susceptible for innumerable conditions, combinations, sorry. Innumerable combinations. What you call the electrical fluid, the magnet fluid, are modification of the universal fluid. Kardec also called it this cosmic fluid or cosmic matter. If the name fluid today is not a good term, is not a good vocabulary to do this, but we can think, we can keep in mind is that the spirits are saying that there is a substance, that substance can have so many modifications, so many different properties. It gives different properties, give, give, give like so many different types of matter. We have different types of matter. Then we're not talking about the state of matter like solid, liquid, gas, plasma. It's not that. We're talking about different types of matter. That's why the high spirits told Alan Kardec, keep in mind you have the spirit and matter. 
Matter can differentiate in so many different properties that on that time, they didn't know yet. They knew that in the future, the science is going to understand that. Okay, keeping this in mind that we have a restricted knowledge in 1857 about matter, about electricity, about magnetism. We could not go forward on explanation or understanding the idea he was talking about. Oh, sorry, oops. Then come one good scientist called James Clerk Maxwell. About 1854-1855, oh sorry, 1864-1865, he proposed the idea on his first paper about the existence of an electromagnetic field that could exist in the universe, what they call electromagnetic waves. They have electric properties and magnetic properties working together, one together with the other one. You see, this was by... The beginning, in 1864, almost nobody paid attention for that. People published this. He published, was a nice work, a fantastic work. But on that time, people, okay, this is Scotland. James Clerk Maxwell is a nice work, but lived there for a while. Three, about six years later, by 1870, the British physicist William Crookes and others, not only he alone, he walks and discovered the, what they call cathode rays. During the last quarter of the 19th century, many historical experiments were done with the, the Crookes tubs to determine what cathode rays were. They didn't know exactly what it had. They figured out one by the experiment. They, they didn't know how we're going to explain this. On the beginning, they have two different perceptions. Then they have two different theories to explain about the cathode rays. Crookes and another scientist called Arthur Schuster believed they were particles of radiant matter. That's electrical charged atoms. Okay, one group, that's group, Crookes was on this group, they believed it was a particle. The other group, the German scientists, Willihard Wildemann and Rich Hertz and Goldstein, they believed there was waves, they call eta waves, eta waves, because on that time they didn't have the knowledge about the electromagnetic field like a consistent information in science. They talk about the idea they have some waves, some new form of electromagnetic radiation, and were separated from what carried electrical current through the tub. You see, on this time, they start already observe some kind of experiments, some facts in science, and they already start to divide the conceptions. One group have a conception of particle, the other group have a conception of waves to the same experiment. You see, even in science, you cannot be precise 100% exactly and say, this is this, is this is that. You need time to investigate and get information. Then how do you expect that Alain Kardec on the Spirit Book in 1857 could be receiving a precise information about the spirits? The spirits told him, look, there is more than you know right now. Matter exists in different ways that you do not understand. And, he, and the spirit was right, you see. In 1870, by the 1880s, they started to discover a lot of things that they didn't know in 1857. In August of 1879, on the age of 22, Hertz, in a series of highly sensitive experiments, demonstrated that the, if electric current has any mass at all, it must be incredibly small. Well, see, now we're talking about a different thing here. Hertz says, okay, electricity must be made of a small matter, a small, we'd say, a small particles. And that's the idea of the fluid is start to be thinking about, well, must be something different here. Maybe it's not only a fluid, but it must be something a little bit different. The same scientist, Hertz, in 1886, he figured out the idea of the electromagnetic waves and he did an experiment that produced electromagnetic waves. And then he proved, oh, that guy from 1864, James Clerk Maxwell, was right. Because James Clerk Maxwell has discarnate, has passed away in 1879. And then by 1886, he was not there together with him to see the experiments, to see the experiment proving his idea. This idea about the existence of the electromagnetic waves was really, really very important 
for that time is, is still very important today. All the communication that we have about electronics, all the communication we have about cell phones, satellites, television, radio, all this information that we have about the internet, we need electromagnetic waves. If by any chance, like a solar radiation can destroy a satellite or can block all the electromagnetic waves inside our planets, we're not gonna have any kind of communication between the electronics today. That's what he says, he's changed the world, he's really changed. Look at the, I'm gonna come back here for this piece book here. We see, we are talking about the electromagnetic waves being discovered, being figured out in 1886. I'm coming back to the spirits books. This is in 1857, that's the question number 30. Alain Kardec asks, is matter formed for one element or several elements? You see, they didn't know about the existence of the electron. They still didn't know in 1886, they didn't still didn't know about the electron. They have no idea, they have the idea of the fluid, something that's flowing from one place to another place, carrying electricity, or can carry magnetic properties, or carrying heat, but we don't know exactly. Today we know, okay, heat is transferred for electromagnetic waves. You go for the, the body of high temperature, for the body of the low temperature, you transfer heat. Then you talk, this transfer is about electromagnetic waves. But on that time, they make no sense to talk about this. And then he asks, he's still asking at that time, he's made for one element or several elements. The answer for the spirit says, one primitive element means you have substance that we, we call today elementary particles, like the electrons, the quarks, and the other ones. But he says, the bodies which you regard as simple are not really elementary. They are transformation of the primitive matter. He, wants, he could not tell Alain Kardec on that moment, okay, look, we have what you call elementary particles. I'm talking about the electrons, quarks, and all of the other ones. Alain Kardec could not understand, and nobody would understand about this. But he gave us this sentence here, the air transformation of a primitive matter. Means in the future, you're going to have this concept, what we're talking here about primitive matter. Today, if the spirit was going to answer for him, he's going to use a different vocabulary, different words for the same concept. There is a primitive matter, there is a, something that's elementary, but not what you know on that time, or 1857. And then he come, whence come the difference prop of matter? That was one question on Kardec, or the other ones that were investigating science, and say, what is the cause, what is the orange for the properties of matter, the different properties of matter? Well, you don't know anything about electrons, you don't know anything about protons, neutrons, you don't know about the chemical reactions in sense of an orbital molecule. How I can explain the properties of matter for you? But the species still gave us some answer, it says. From the modification undergone by elementary molecules as a result of the union and the action of certain conditions. We need to understand here the word molecules was no on the time. They knew they have hydrogen combined with oxygen could produce the molecule of the water. The substance called water, there's a representation of a molecule, H2O. But the, what the Spirit's talking about, elementary molecules, is not exactly what you're talking about molecules today on that time. And then come the question number 34, related to the idea of the molecules. Have the molecules of matter a determinate form? Those molecules undoubtedly has a form but the one which is not appreciable by your organs means you cannot see it, you cannot sense. You're going to need instrumentation to see the ideas or to create a model of the molecules. Today you can create a model of a molecules, a simple one like water, or even complex molecules like the DNA, RNA. However, on that time, it was really impossible to talk about this, but they still want to know. And then he asks another question. Is that form constant or variable? Well, can you imagine the kind of a question the spirit say, oh, this guy wants to know more than can understand. And then he said, okay, we're going to give this answer for you. It's constant for the primitive elementary molecules, but variable for the secondary molecules, which are themselves only agglomeration of the primary ones. But they, there's something very interesting over here. For what you term a molecule is still very far being for the elementary molecule. Means what you have the knowledge about, 
we're talking about elemental molecule in 1857. What the Spirit says for him is that it's completely different. The reality is completely different what you know right now. Today, they make no sense to talk about elemental molecule. Makes sense to talk about elemental particles, like the electrons, the way I said, is quarks and the other ones. But on that time, molecule was a vocabulary was used. But you see the idea, the idea the Spirit was telling, say, look, you don't know yet. And I cannot explain because you do not have enough information for us to explain to you. But still, I'm going to tell you, what you see today is not the, re the complete reality. The primitive idea of the primitive particles or the primitive molecule, what you call that time, is completely different for your, your knowledge. You see, the, what I want to show you here is that we didn't have the science knowledge on 1857 to understand the explanation of this piece. But they gave us the idea, say, look, there is more than you know today. There is, you, in the future, probably, you're going to understand the idea what you want to know today. And then come 1895. The German Wilhelm Wittgen discovered the X-rays using the, Krub, the Krug stub. You see, 1895 is about what? F almost 40 years after this piece book has been published. And that time, the guy was asking, what is the form of the molecules? Only after discovered the X-rays, like on the, on the next century, on 1920s, 1925, that's the, the scientist was able to use X-ray and to use the diffraction of the crystals. He started to have some ideas of the shape of the simple molecules on the crystal. Today, you can make the, the science of crystallography. You can make, use X-rays to produce the shape of big molecules like they did for the DNA and figure out the shape in a model of the DNA. But you see, Kardec was still wants to know on that time that was not possible. But the Spirit says, it's not what you think about this now. The future is going to sh show you something different. 1897, 40 years after the publication of the Spirit's book, J.J. Thompson discovered the electron. And now they start to talk about, oh, okay, there is a particle, they have a Electrical charge, this electrical charge we're going to call a negative electrical charge, and is responsible by the phenomenon of electricity. When electricity is flowing from one pole to another pole, it's the electrons that are flowing on this wire, it's flowing on that material, it's flowing in the liquid. You see, now we start to have some ideas that's about the talk about elementar matter, elementar particles. But still, at that time, nobody called this complete elementary particles. But they, they knew there was one particle called electron, and it is very important. 1998, one day, one year later, Root 4 discovered alpha and beta particles emitted by uranium, the radiation. He, they, now they knew, oh, look, we have a substance. This substance can lose mass by irradiating energy, by irradiating particles. Those particles have a lot of energy, depending on the, 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 the kind of speed they have. But they didn't know exactly, but they knew they have energy. They knew that mass was losing energy. Not mass being transformed energy, it's not this. The, 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 the matter was losing mass in the sense they are losing energy. They, they pass energy from one point to another point. Transform energy is gonna be the best term over here. Then come 1905. Okay, come this guy called Albert Einstein. He did a lot of crazy ideas and fantastic world of new ideas, his miracle year. He was not working in university. This is amazing. If he was today, Einstein would be no chance to do anything because he didn't have a PhD like the science need to be a PhD, a postdoctor today to do something. He was finished his university he was working in a company, looking the paperwork about the, the publication, about the models people was trying to create. And he decided, okay, I'm going to take my time, I'm going to use my knowledge, I'm going to start to talk about something. He wrote a paper about the called Brownian motion. He talked another one that, that says equivalence of mass and energy. You see the word here? Equivalency. Einstein never said, I wrote a paper about transformation of mass 
to energy, how to book energy mass or mass energy. No, he said equivalence. How come mass can be equivalent to energy? How energy can be equivalent to the mass? He tried to give the, another concept about mass related energy. And he did a work on another one that was very interesting called the photoelectric effect. This was the one he received his Nobel Prize was this photoelectric effect. And the fourth one was special relativity. What do you want to talk about the special relativity? It's related to the idea of equivalent of mass and energy. That's work that was related. People got the idea from Einstein because Einstein on this work he started to say that time is the fourth dimension on, when you talk about gravity. I do not understand this too much. It's really complicated mathematics involved on this. But one thing I want to talk about this is this. Einstein didn't say that everything is relative, no. People say, oh, everything is relative. Einstein said that. He published a theory that everything is relative. It's not that. He was talking about another idea. And about dimensions. When he thought the time was the fourth dimension related to the gravity, now everybody say, oh, now I know Einstein was talking about the spiritism. Einstein about the, the, the other dimensions. The spirits live in another dimensions. This is a misconception, this is a misunderstanding. Because even on the time of the Spirits book, when organized in 1857, there was already some books published by other French scientists or other French organizers from the experiments they collect from the people what they, call, they used to call sonambolic state. And they, they communicate with the spirits the one has already parted away a few years before, 10 years or 20 years before. And those spirits used to say, on the spiritual world, they have houses, they have objects, they have books, they walk, they go some, some place, they visit people. And then if they do this kind of stuff that's similar we're doing here, then they have the, the sense of the same dimension. They have the three-dimensional state. They have the same idea of time that we have. The most of the spirits that live nearby the planet, they have the same ideas. And people start to say, no, no, no. The spirits live in another dimension. The spirit world is a fourth dimension. Oh, no, it's a fifth dimension. It's a complete mistake. It's a complete misconception. It's a complete misunderstanding. We need to understand this. Einstein didn't come to say anything about a spiritual world or dimension. This is someone misunderstood and start to create these ideas. Even the spirit book, the Alain Kardec never said anything about a spiritual world and dimension. I never saw anything about this. But what I want to talk about the photoelectric effect, that's something that Einstein was working. And he said the light is made of particles called photon. Oh, that was a big, big ideas because on that time, even from maybe 100 years before, they knew that light could behave as a particle and light could behave as a wave. But nobody could imagine that light could be have a small amount of lights, has a small amount of a particle, which they call photon. And these ideas of photon came from the idea of quantum mechanics. Here's another, another point that people also make a lot of I don't know why, they like to use the word quantum because Einstein took this from his professor Max Planck and he says, look, the light is made of a quantum of unity, they call photon. Oh, then quantum become on, on the 20th century the most important word. And if you want to be something nice, put a quantum in your book. Ah, oh, then you can write quantum healing, quantum mind, quantum vision, quantum spirit, quantum soul. As long as you put the word quantum, oh, that's nice has nothing to do with the quantum mechanics, has nothing to do with the quantum physics. 20, 1924, Louis de Broglie, that's a French guy. In his thesis, he discovered the wave nature of the electrons. Actually, he didn't discover, he proposed the, nature, the wave nature of electrons and suggested that all matter have wave properties. In 1927, two scientists, two group of scientists, they did some experiments and they actually proved that the matter could behave as a wave. On that situation was the electron. They was able to prove the electron was behave as a wave. Then came the equation from Planck equation that energy of the wave depend on the frequency of the waves. That sometimes they write F for frequency or this symbol here for the wavelength. What is the idea of, on this situation here? Okay, 
Now, in the 1927, everybody in physics, not in complete science, but in physics, was talking about matter can behave as a wave or matter can behave as a particle. Depending on the experiment you're going to do, you're going to observe the two point of view. Wiener Heisenberg is a German scientist who was working on these ideas. He wrote a book called Physics and Philosophy. In this book, he says, the ideas that we're talking about here in 1927, 1930s, we're going to take a century for people to accept and try to understand. And that's really true, because even today, 100 years later, almost 100 years later, still people say, well, we do not understand the quantum mechanics too much. We know the theory, we have the equations, we can work with the mathematics, we can do the experiments, but it really has a lot of strange stuff over here. But this simple equation here, I want to use this for, give some idea here. If the frequencies relate to the energy, then we could say high frequency has high energy, like low frequency, like radio, radio waves, microwave, has less energy than the waves like gamma rays. Gamma rays has a lot of energy. X-rays has more energy than the microwaves. Then as soon as you increase the frequency, you increase the energy. That's one thing the spirits is trying to give some information. Andrea Luiz is a spirit in Brazilian books. He writes about these ideas. He, he wants to tell us like this. We can use the information that we have from the quantum physics to try to understand what the spirit is talking about the spiritual world. What is the, the spirit is talking about the, the transmission of thoughts, the idea of mind connection with mind. Not that quantum mechanics explain the spiritism. It helps us to understand the process. Then we could even tell about this mental electromagnetic waves. Means we could produce waves out of thoughts that have electromagnetic properties and other properties, not only electromagnetic. If, if the mental wave was only electromagnetic, we could detect already. But we didn't, because it has another properties. But the spirits like to talk about thought emission by rays. And then he and Louise brings two information from the spiritual world for us. He said each creature has feelings emit a specific rays or waves. Means each one of us can produce waves related to our mind, that relate our feelings. And also we can create in, around ourselves this kind of a psychic ambient, this kind of a condition that we can share with the other peoples. We can share in the sense that if they have the similar feelings, similar thoughts, similar ideas. Then that's something that science one day going to find out and going to organize on the books of science that we call today, we could call a mental field. The field that could have a wave and particle behave, this duality. Means when you think about something, you can create waves in your mind, this wave can spread around yourself, can connect with the other people. It is science proving this already? No, we, didn't, we don't have any information about this yet. But is the idea of the science we're talking about electromagnetic waves help us to understand this? Yes, we can make some analogy and can propose some explanation, propose some ideas. Then we need to understand this. The knowledge that we have from science today is not to prove exactly the, the spiritual world, the relationship between the discarnate and incarnate, but it helps us to understand the explanation that the spirits gave us since for 1857 and use this comprehension, this explanation to improve our lives. If we know that we can produce waves from our thoughts, from our feelings, then we can educate our feelings, we can educate our mind and produce a good situation that's going to evolve our biological body. This problem is going to be related to their health. This is going to be producing some things. We know when you have different feelings, we produce different substances in the brain. The brain produces different substances according to different feelings we have. Then what I want to keep like and organize the whole idea for this talk is this. Science is help us to understand the teachings of the spirits. Science yet do not explain all the phenomena. Science yet do not explain all the relationship between the spiritual world and the incarnate world. But we need to keep investigating. We need to keep understanding because remember what the spirits told Allan Kardec. We have the, the spirits and the matter. Then we need to understand all the properties, all the situation about the matter 
and we need to educate ourselves as a spirits to understand better and work together better, not only with the better, but together with the other ones. And that's when I want to, to remember you, the last two parts of the spirits books, there is a, like a guide, there's like a, a helping tools for you to go forward in your life and try to do better. Use science as a tool for understand your life, but do not take away your ethics, your moral as a guide for your life. Even though you do not understand science, you can still understand the moral and the ethic of the Spirit's book and help you to go forward in your life, help you to improve the steps you're taking every day, every time. Mm -hmm. Thank you for everybody for the attention, for the time we took today. I want to finish today with a simple prayer. Then we can organize our mind. Maybe we can spread our thoughts by create a better field around ourselves. Lovely spirits of lovely friends that are working together with us. We ask Jesus for the permission to be a little light on the history of the Christianity. Then we can transform ourselves on tools on the hand of Jesus. Then we can see in your life the presence of the gospel, the presence of a guide to our step day by day. And then we can transform ourselves in a better situation, in a better behavior, in a better attitude. So be it. Thank you, Jesus. We want to give some, there is any kind of uh, news? Okay, you're going to pass here. We can talk about if you have, I know we have some meetings. We still have time for three minutes. <laughs> well, reminders, yes. Because we still have some groups that we still organize here. Online. Everything we work on Zoom yet, because until everybody can have this vaccination, we can grab together over here. Going to take some time. We don't know how long time. Then you have, we have a group that study Portuguese. It studies online on the Zoom. <laughs> We do this every Wednesday from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. We're going to restart another group in English. We usually study this on Tuesdays from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. All of this, we're going to send the information for you guys. Like on the page of BSS, maybe we're going to put out the information maybe on YouTube together. Then we can have you together on the Zoom. Remember, we do everything online. All those groups that he studies, he's still online. Maybe we're going to keep this for the next six months. We don't know if in six months maybe we got vaccinated and we're going to be better. We have information about the, I don't know, the garage sale. They still keeping the garage sale over here. I don't know if they're working on this. Choose the meditation. I don't know if we still, we stop maybe a little bit for the, the end of the year because Christmas end of the year. Every Tuesday meditation, 7 p.m. A group of us that used to be here in Brazil, or sorry, used to be here in Florida, they are in Europe now, they're in Spain. This time they're, they're sleeping, they cannot hear us, maybe. And they are very organized, and they participate, they produce this on YouTube for us. A th Thursday meditation, 7 p.m. On the page of the Brown Spiritual Society, go there in YouTube, subscribe yourself, and you're going to be able to participate on this. And remember, everything is online. Shop online, like uh, the, the Broad Spiritist Society Amazon, you can shop online and see whatever you can like it. You, you, you have find the, the materials, find everything you like it, and then you can organize how you're going to pick up this. They can give you all the instructions online. And also they have the, the coca container here is the food. Every Saturday you can, you can ask online, there is a condition to buy. And really, if you don't buy by Wednesday, Thursday, everybody is already booked up. They don't have more than enough people to, to sell. They sell 100, 120, I don't know how many they do every week. But I know that if you, don't, if you decide to do on Friday, probably you already book up. You don't have more room for you. But try to do it. It's good. It's, the food is excellent. The food is fantastic. Any, anything else? Okay, then we're going to finish for tonight. 
Hope to meet you next weekend and next week. We have so many different meetings on the Broward Spiritual Society on YouTube. Thank you.